everyone, and thanks for coming to our Reference Managing webinar. Uh, I am Orvi Dingwall, and I'll be leading the session today. So we've got three objectives that we'll be going through, and we're anticipating that by the end of this session, you'll be able to describe Minet's four core services, to describe the core functions of reference management software, and then be able to identify the software that's going to be uh, the best for your needs. So um, we're also interested if there is something specific that you were hoping to learn in today's session. Um, and this is a recording of uh, the webinar only and not a live session. Um, so if you, if there is not, by the end of this recording, if there is something that we didn't cover that you, um, that you were hoping that we would have, or we didn't meet one of your objectives, please do be in touch so that uh, we can either answer your questions or kind of work through the things that you were hoping to uh, learn about. So we wanna make sure that everybody knows about MyNet, Manitoba's Health Information and Knowledge Network. We are a library service uh, that's provided to staff at Manitoba Health, seniors in active living, all the fee-for-service physicians in the province, and also staff of the participating regional health authorities. Uh, this is our team. There's myself uh, as the librarian who is the liaison to the regions. We have a new librarian starting with us on April 2nd, uh, and she will be our liaison to Manitoba Health. Um, and Gail Matheson is also uh, helps us out on a part-time basis. And Cheryl is the one who um, will process your library card registration. She will answer um, or she will retrieve any documents that you request. Um, and so that's our team. So we have four core services here at MyNet. The first is literature searches and these, uh, this is when if you have a question or you need information on a certain topic, then you can just message us and we will do a comprehensive literature search for you and then provide you with a list of uh, citations and abstracts. And, um, and you can customize your search to say, I need to have absolutely everything on this topic or I only want review articles from the last five years and I don't want more than 10 references. Um, the more information that you can provide us about what you're looking for, the more we'll be able to customize and get you what you need. Document delivery is when we send you the articles that you want. So if you've, um, uh, if you've had a lit search completed and you want some of the full text or if you've been doing your own searching or if somebody has told you about a really great article then just pop us a message and say and let us know which article it is that you want and we will send you the full text so don't ever uh, if you're doing your own searching and you come across a paywall that says you can have this article for $85 don't ever pay that just send us the citation information and we will happily send you the full text article. We also do a current awareness service where we set up a customized search for you on a topic or author or journal or whatever it is that you um, want to keep up to date on. And we send you a weekly email with all of the newest literature published on that topic or author or in that journal. And we also do training and education and orientation, just like this session. Um, and we, so we've had an education series all, um, all year this year on a monthly basis. Uh, and we can also create custom training sessions. So these can be one-on-one -on -one or in small groups. So if um, you've got a small team of people or, uh, or a large team, we're happy to come and do a presentation. We can always do the webinars. Uh, we're happy to customize these in the way that's going to be best for you. Uh, and finally, unfortunately, um, MyNet does not include access to electronic resources. Um, but if you are a student or you have a nil appointment with the University of Manitoba, you can access the electronic resources. Um, but if not, then we will happily do the searching for you. Um, 
we know it's a bit of a it we're not instantaneous um, but you can just build this into your timelines and we can certainly meet your needs the one resource that you do have access to is up to date which is a clinical decision support tool and you can access us through MyNet or if you're on site and an RHA or um, or government facility, then um, you can just log into up to date. And if you need help or have any questions, make sure you let us know. So um, we are interested in what um, people's previous experience with reference management is. Um, and the the live session earlier today was a little bit split. So they had. Um, either no real previous experience or they had previously used one reference managing software. And of those people uh, that had used a reference managing software before, um, some had used or heard of EndNote and some had um, heard of uh, RefWorks. So the core functions of reference management are to easily manage your citations um, and or your PDFs, your full text of articles. Uh, and so this is, I mean, for, for some people, it's to take that big folder of PDFs that they have and make it into something that they can actually work with and, and find what they're looking for. And for, um, for another group of people, the appeal is for when you're writing a paper, um, be it an assignment for school or a guideline or a policy, or, what, or some kind of report, and it's to easily manage all of the references within that paper so that everything that you've cited within the text of your paper is in your reference list, and everything in your reference list has been cited in your paper. So that those are kind of the two core functions of why you would want to use a reference managing software. Um, but they do a bunch of other things. Uh, and so you can manage thousands of references. You can easily, easily create formatted bibliographies so you don't have to worry about where all the commas and italics and spaces and all that kind of stuff. It just does it for you. Um, you can import references directly from databases so you don't need to type out full citations. Uh, you can share libraries with uh, your colleagues. Um, so we can share EndNote uh, databases with you. And um, also it's really, uh, they're great for collaboration if you're working as part of a team. And you can also access these things from, uh, from anywhere. So you don't have to worry about storing things on one, on one computer. So which reference managing program you choose is really dependent on your needs. There's a few really great programs uh, that are available. And our recommendation for which one you use, um, and full disclosure, uh, we, you know, we don't receive any kind of compensation um, from any of these software companies. We're just, uh, you know, we promote the ones that we know work well and um, that have different features that help, uh, help different people with different tasks that they need to do. So, um, so whatever your needs are, there's a, there's a software that's going to be right for you. So this slide displays the um, common considerations that you would want to think through um, as you are trying to select between EndNote, Mendeley, and Zotero. Um, and then this is just a listing of some of the other uh, considerations that you want to think about. So are you going to be collaborating with people? Are you in the same building and on the same network? Or are you, um, you know, based at multiple places throughout the country? Do you have that big, huge folder of PDFs that are named in crazy things um, that you can never sort out or find? Um, or do you frequently do your own searches and want to pull in new references? All these things will um, help determine what the right software is for you. So this is a completed uh, comparison table, and the handout is available, uh, or we will circulate the handout for you. Um, the cost of EndNote is a little bit out of date on this slide, and the cost of Zotero and Mendeley, it's a little bit floating, but this gives you an idea of their cost. Um, their core functions are all essentially the same. Um, it's, so again, it's just depending on what your specific needs are. 
is going to depend or going to determine which one is going to be right for you. So we'll touch on EndNote first. EndNote really is the best for systematic reviews or for really large collections of references. So if you're going over, um, what, well, uh, even if you're going over 100, certainly over 1,000, EndNote is going to be the best um, reference managing software for you if you've got more than 1,000 references. This is the only option that's available at 300 Carleton Manitoba Health. So because the firewall prevents, um, prevents any cloud-based sharing of documents, um, that's what Mendeley and Zotero do, is they're both cloud-based. Whereas EndNote is based, can be based on your servers. Um, so it's the only option at Manitoba Health and there are uh, people at Manitoba Health who use it. So it is possible to get it installed on your computers. So it is desktop based, so that's great. Um, you can sync to an online web version um, if you want to access from different places. It's the best choice for systematic reviews because it's the most customizable. And I'll show you some of those features when we do the demonstration. Um, and it really has the most advanced um, functions. The con is that the web version is not is still kind of glitchy. Um, and it's not as great at, as Mendeley as taking um, a folder of PDFs and bringing them into um, and bringing them into EndNote and recognizing what they are. It's good it's not as good as Mendeley. And it does have a somewhat steep learning curve, but what we always tell what we always tell people is it's worth the time to invest to learn EndNote or um, or any of these softwares. It's worth the time to do that because in the long run it will save you that time from all uh, from either doing things manually or doing all your um, your double checks. Uh, so it is it is worth the worth the learning. So we're going to do a live demonstration. So I'll pull up an EndNote library and I know it's displaying quite small and I can't get it to display any bigger. So for that, I'll apologize. Um, but I just want to show you some of the key concepts of, of what it looks like. So this is what it is. It's basically um, a list of references. So in this library, I've got 25 references. And what, um, if I want to sort them by, and you can see I've got different fields that are displaying here. So across the top, there's an author field, year. Uh, these are journal articles. So they've got volume, issue, page numbers, title, um, the journal, and then uh, and then the um, so a custom field that that I've created. So if I want to um, move them around, and this is the nice thing about EndNote, I can just kind of drag, you know, the authors over here. I can uh, make the title field bigger, or I can make it smaller. If I right click uh, on this um, on this tab of uh, fields, then it displays for me all of the fields that I could display. So if I want to, if I created a bunch of custom fields and I only wanted to see that listing, or if I had, um, you can display any of these. So there's uh, reference type, secondary authors, publishers, um, type of work, ISSN numbers, if you were looking at books, the accession numbers, labels you've created, keywords, abstracts, all kinds of stuff. Uh, that is available for you to display and manipulate and move around in EndNote. So that's really great. Um, and it's also super easy to sort. So if I wanted to sort by author, I just need to click on the author field and it changes the, the order of the display similarly. And you can do that for any of these fields. So I'll sort now by title. Um, and you can see the little jump in the screen that just kind of changes the, the sort. So that's really great. Um, I've created some custom groups. So I've got 25 references in this library and I've tagged nine of them as being about dementia. I've tagged five of them as being about long-term care. And I can create in the search bar at the top, I can run a little, you can run all kinds of advanced queries in EndNote again, which is part of the um, reason that it is the preferred option for the really, really big um, uh, libraries, um, which are 
uh, I can say, okay, of all these references, which ones have I not tagged as dementia? Which ones have I not tagged as long-term care? And then it will display the remaining ones that I have yet to tag. And the tags you can create, they can be anything. They can be topics, they can be words, they can be codes. Um, if you're writing a paper, you can say, I wanna put this in the introduction, this is for the methods. Um, whatever you wanna do, you can, you can do that. And so I've set up these automatic groups on the left-hand side. Um, and then I can just click on them. So then it just quickly displays for me my nine articles about dementia. Another um, thing that it will do is that just with the click of a button, um, so it's this button up here at the top, I can say, uh, I just select all the references and then I say, I want you and note to find me all the full text. And again, I apologize that it's so hard to see, but on the left-hand side, um, it starts searching and finding for those full texts. And so this is a really um, easy way for it to run. It doesn't always find everything, but anything that is freely and easily available on the internet, um, EndNote will find it. And so that, uh, so for whatever EndNote doesn't find that you still need the full text of, then again, you can just send us a message and say, I need the full text of these articles. Uh, and we will send them to you. And so um, what happens is I can just, I should have, um, I shouldn't have selected all of them. It's, uh, but, and I'm not sure if you're able to see, but it's saying of those 25 references, EndNote has so far found 19 of them. It has found the URLs for two of them and it hasn't found three. Just with the click of a button, um, as I describe this, uh, that's really, really fast. Okay, so it's done. So it did find 20, and you can see now it's added the URL in the URL field. And if I come into this EndNote record, at the top, there's a tab for the PDF right in EndNote, right here, is the PDF, the full text. And I can come through here, and if I'm reading, I can select um, and highlight, I can make notes, then I just, um, I can save it if I want to or just click out of it. I'm gonna say, no, I don't wanna save it. Um, and it's that easy. And so now you've got, instead of having to print a whole bunch of articles and highlight them with the highlighter and make notes about them and then carry them around, uh, they're all just right here. Uh, now I know that some people still like to, um, you know, give their eyes a break from, um, the computer screen and they do like to highlight by hand um, and so you could you know copy that into the electronic version or you can just have a notes field where you come in here and say like there's a great quote about this concept or there's a really great graph in this article about this or despite this title and abstract sounding really great it actually wasn't relevant to what we needed or whatever you want to do so that's a really great um, that's a really great field now what I'll do is I will show you um, how you bring in references from PubMed. And if you have other, uh, if you have access to other databases, um, including library catalogs, if you wanted to bring in books, and uh, you can, this is a really easy, it's really easy to bring in references from a database. So I'm just gonna do a really basic search in PubMed. I'm gonna search on dementia. And uh, so here we go. I'm just going to scroll down a little bit and I'm going to say, okay, uh, these three articles look really, really great to me. Um, I want to bring them into EndNote. So I just select them. And then I come up here to the send to and I say send to citation manager and then create file. And it's as easy as that. Now, just so you know, I do have these instructions included in the PowerPoint. And, I, um, and these will be available. So if you're watching the video and you wanna have a copy and remember how to do this, just pop me an email and we'll send this to you. So it says now, um, do I wanna open with EndNote? I say yes, and boom, the, that citation is right here uh, in my EndNote. And that's all it took. And so if I wanna tag these, so I'm gonna add these to my dementia. I just select them. I say, I wanna change my, um, change my custom one field. I want to put in the tag of dementia. I say, okay. It says, do you really want to do this? 
I say yes, and then it says, okay, I made the changes. And then boom, in my custom field, they've been tagged as dementia, and on the left-hand side, when I click on my dementia group, now they're in there. Uh, it was that easy. Um, if you do come across something, because it always happens that you can't find to import from the internet, so it might be something really old, it might be a book, it might be some report, whatever it might be. It might be that you want to um, reference a website or maybe a presentation that you went to. You can just come up to the top and say references, new reference. Then you tell, uh, you describe what the reference type is. So I'll say it's a book. And then you can just type in here what, um, what the citation information is. So I'm just going to make up something um, for Bees EndNote webinar. And then I can click save. And uh, then it's added right into my, into my EndNote. And you can add in, populate as many fields as you want to. So it provides you a bunch of different ones. Um, it's up to you whatever you want to include there. But that's just the, it's easiest, of course, and, um, and leaves you the, the least amount of uh, user error when you pull things in automatically directly from a database. But you can totally add in your own references by hand. And also, um, again, why it's the best for systematic reviews is it has the greatest function to find duplicates. And so you can tell it to find duplicates um, based on, you can customize how it searches these things. Um, and this is for, for a couple of reasons. Um, again, if you're searching multiple databases like Medline, Embase, PubMed, and CINAHL, um, there's going to be a lot of duplication if you're searching on the same topic in each of those databases because all the sort of highest impact journals like New England Journal of Medicine and The Lancet, they're all indexed in, in almost all of the databases. So if you're searching each of them, you're going to have duplicates in your record. So you'll have, if you search four databases, you'll probably have um, four articles that are the same. And so EndNote is the best at finding those duplicates and really determining that they are in fact actually duplicates and they're not, you know, one author who's written um, two papers, both with the same title, but they have different content and they're from different years. Uh, so that is a really great function of EndNote. Now, the other thing that um, is really helpful uh, and is one of the key uh, business cases to uh, get your feet wet in reference managing is the ability to use it when you're writing. So if I say I want to include a citation, so I'm in Word, and I want to include a citation um, here in this paper, I come up to my ribbon, uh, my, uh, my ribbon in Word, and it's in EndNote, and I say I want to insert a citation. And I can pick from here. It already, because I've got EndNote open um, and I've got a certain EndNote library open, then uh, Word knows what I want to, to use. So I'm going to select that reference. And there we go. I've got my in-text cit citation. And then I would just format this to say that, OK, this is my reference list um, at the bottom. Uh, another great feature is that if I said, uh-oh, I EndNote is um, writing in APA style and I need to change to Vancouver style, I again just come up to my ribbon and it's set to APA 6th edition and I say I want to change to, um, let's see, I want to change to Chicago 16th with footnote style. And, oh, it hasn't quite fixed. Oh, it's because I did an in-text citation. Um, so I'm going to change to a different format. So this is a Vancouver format. Uh, so instead of having the author name and the year, it's just got a simple number and then a reference list of a number. So that is really convenient. And again, that um, prevents the instance where you cited something in the text and forgot it in the reference list or put something in the reference list and forgot to put it uh, to actually cite it in the text. The other thing that you can do is that in EndNote, if I said, OK, I want to sort, I'm just going to put this back over here. In EndNote, I want to take all of these references and I want to pull them into Word. There we go. And this is kind of a goofy, oh, these are just a little bit. Oh, 
kind of a funny format. Um, uh, then I've just drug that whole reference list right into, into Word. And if ever you want to, um, and again with EndNotes, all the customizability, if I said, oh gosh, like I wanted some spaces between each citation or I wanted this list to be numbered or whatever, or you wanted something bolded or italicized, you can customize all of that. And again, it does, there is a bit of a learning curve um, and it does take a little bit of time. We again can help you with that. Uh, and also, again, it's worth your time to go through it and, and learn how to do those changes because then it's all automated from there. So that is the demo of EndNote. And like I said, I do have um, some of the screenshots in the, in the PowerPoint. Um, so we, uh, we can circulate that just to highlight some of the, the features. And then this is um, the instructions on how to get citations from PubMed into EndNote. So the other one that we'll focus on today is Mendeley. And I think I've mentioned that this is the best for if you've got a huge folder of existing PDFs and, um, and you need to pull them in and you don't want to have to do all that manual data entry or do all that finding in a database. It's also really great for multi-site collaboration. So students love this because they can um, work you know, from home um, uh, or from you know, even at different places uh, if they're you know, doing an online course or something. Um, you can do multi-site collaboration, which is great. Again, this is not an option, unfortunately, at Manitoba Health. But if someone is, uh, you know, works at Manitoba Health, but in their on their free time is a student or does committee work or other kinds of volunteer work, uh, this still might be something that you want to consider for home. The pro is that the basic features are free, and basic does not mean, um, you know, this is not like when you purchase an app and it barely gives you much of anything, the free version, and it charges you for everything else. Um, the uh, when you want to, when you would want to start considering to pay for something, it would be if you've got a whole, but like a really lot of PDFs that you need to be storing, or if you want more than three people or three groups um, able to access, um, able to access and collaborate uh, with your MedNote library. Um, the cons are that. Uh, well, it doesn't, you know, it is cloud-based, so that doesn't work uh, for a place where that's firewalled. And, um, uh, and the customizability is not as robust as EndNote. So to get started with EndNote, you want to create a, an account online at Mendeley.com. And you can just do, uh, continue to use Mendeley online. Um, but there is, there are enhanced features if you download the, uh, the desktop version. So for some people, that's not an option if they don't have admin rights on their computer. Um, but this is a nice thing that you can do. And if you are able to download the desktop version at work, and then you also want to download, and then you also want to be working on it from home, um, you can download the desktop version from home and it all syncs together. So it kind of like uses that online account as the, as the hub um, and then just uh, allows you that desktop version. So for maximum uh, functionality and maximum use of the features, download the Mendeley desktop version, but you can get by with just the online version. So you'll, oh, I'll switch now to a live display here. Um, at its root, it looks very similar, I know to you, it just looks um, really tiny, um, but it's the same concept as EndNote, that you've got uh, these columns here that display, uh, that display the citation information, you can move them around, so I'll just drag the authors over here, the titles here, if you wanna change the sort, again, you can just click on authors and it'll change it, or if you wanna sort by title, I've created a group, um, so I've got some of these tagged as um, being about uh, ear tubes. Um, it's really easy to do like that. You can see here, I'm also part of a group. So I'm part of a journal club and we've got a Mendeley group um, that's there. 
when I go though to look and see, oh, I would really like to be able to, I don't really care when I added it, um, but I want to be able to see what the page numbers are or what the volume issues of this journal, and I right click, it only lets me have these um, five different uh, displays that are available. So that's one of those instances where it's just not as robust as, um, as EndNote. Uh, and I think, oh, I have already included this. Yeah, but when I talk about um, pulling in the uh, full text PDFs, I can, um, if you just give me one second, I'll add a folder. And of course, this is not really playing. It's not being quickly. Anyway, um, I will just let me try. Oh, gosh. Um, I can. I'll just pull up my folders from over. I'll, I will use my second screen. So again, EndNote does this too. And earlier today, um, we tried, I have a folder of, uh, here it is. So I've got this folder of PDFs to import. And, oh, no, that's not the one I wanted. Goodness, of course, this always happens when you are live. And huh, that's not the one. Um, well, you'll just have to take my word that earlier today we pulled in, we had a folder of 20 references. When I told EndNote to pull in those 20 PDFs, um, it was able to understand what six of them were. And EndNote was able to bring in all 20. So you can see them here. You can see some of them it didn't quite, quite get right. Like this one says, C space commentary. And so it's called something commentary. And if I click on it, you can see it's this um, editorial in CMAJ. And so it kind of understood commentary. But probably I'd want to come in here and say that the journal, so I can just add this in. The journal is CMAJ. I might want to type in the abstract. I might not. Um, I can put in the, uh, oh, the authors. I'll just double check them. They look good. And where was it displaying that commentary? I can take out that space. Then I save it. Or I might want to say, no, actually, um, uh, uh, that this is not called. It's commentary and editorial autonomy of CMAJ. There. And so now that is all tidied up, um, and that was really easy. So uh, Mendeley really was far is far superior at pulling in those PDFs. So um, again, depending on what your needs are and what you have access to, that's going to depend on um, which is the right software for you. So we'll come back to the PowerPoint here. And this is, again, just an example. You can um, create custom groups. You can sort your columns alphabetically. Uh, but in Mendeley, you only have five fields that you can display. Now, some people, um, we used to, at the university, subscribe to something called RefWorks, which was, uh, for a very long time, kind of the standard go-to online reference managing software. And uh, lots of people, um, particularly students, um, created RefWorks accounts. But over the years, um, it's gotten, it's not, uh, you know, it just wasn't kept up to date and it is really glitchy. Mm -hmm. And um, and Mendeley and Zotero have kind of also, and, and always EndNote, uh, have surpassed it. So, and the cost of it is, um, just increased as well. So uh, the University of Manitoba, um, they ended the subscription at the end of December of 2017, and the data is still available until the end of April. So if you have a RefWorks library and you would like to save everything that's in it, we can help you with that. The instructions are here at this uh, link. Um, give it a try or we can help you through it uh, so you still have uh, over a month to pull in that data. And again, we can pull it from RefWorks into EndNote or Mendeley or whatever you want to do. So your data won't be lost. 
Uh, we're also interested, oh, before we do our final poll, I will just mention about Zotero. So um, Zotero is very, very uh, comparable to Mendeley. Um, it's free, it's web-based in the cloud, it has all the same functions and features. Uh, our experience here though, and again, we're not paid by any of these, um, our experience is that Mendeley though just is a bit better. It's better at the PDFs, it's writing um, style is a little bit better. Uh, you know, Zotero is still really great. Um, so you can try them both out or if you just want the recommendation for one, um, the free web-based recommendation is uh, Mendeley. So we're certainly interested if you're going to try reference managing software. And from our poll earlier, uh, respondents said, yes, this was definitely the thing that they had been looking for to help them with their work. Um, other people said that they'd probably try one of them the next time they went to do kind of a writing or a researching kind of project. And nobody said no, so that was really positive. Um, and then we asked, which one will you try? And people were more heavily favored toward EndNote, but we had a lot of people on from who work at Manitoba Health, so that would uh, definitely influence their decision. Um, and the other thing just to kind of mention is that, uh, you know, if you do, if you are writing a paper and you have, you know, less than 20 references, or you're just not willing to, you know, jump through these hurdles, or you can't get, um, support to get EndNote, just, um, the funding for EndNote, uh, we, and you st just want a better workflow to manage PDFs manually or better manage references manually, we can certainly help you with that, right? Um, some of the basic, uh, the you know, a really basic way is just to say, have one central location, so one central folder where you save all of your references. If you need to um, kind of manage them into smaller groups, just create subfolders, have a, um, a naming structure of those PDFs that makes sense and is relevant to you. So maybe it's by author or title, maybe it's by year, um, but you wanna be able to uh, recognize those just so they're not written in. Sometimes when you would save a uh, full text um, article PDFs, they save as, like number codes and stuff. And that's not really helpful if you're trying to find them again. And if you want more information about EndNote or Mendeley, they've got great online videos and general resources and tutorials. We can also help you come and do custom sessions. I know we've already had a couple of requests since our session this morning where people said, okay, I've got all this data in an Access database. Can you help me export it from Access and get it into EndNote. These are definitely things that we can help with. So if you have questions or would like more information, please don't hesitate to contact us. Again, our Manitoba Health Librarian is starting at the beginning of April, um, but you can contact myself or our general MyNet line um, in the meantime, and we're always happy to help you out. So thank you, um, and if you want a copy of the recording, just pop me an email, orby.dingwell at umanitoba.ca, and happy to send that to you. Thanks so much for listening.